Hello, everybody. Expect everything from Wayne. So, dancing, singing, jokes, everything. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Mark the Gentleman would turn here. Welcome to my workshop here in sunny and very warm Butte in Cornwall. Uh, so, straight on to who have I got with me tonight. We've got Pete from Twisted Trees, and we've got Wayne Good Wood Turner. Good evening. Uh, Dan from Taylor's Murfield may or may not be joining us, and Colwyn Way may or may not be joining us. But if he's not joining us on the panel, Colwyn will probably be in the chat at some point, giving me some stick, as he promised he would. Unless he's watching uh, Coronation Street. Unless he's oh, watching yeah. Coronation Street, too. Yeah. Not to see me doing it then. Well, that's true. Yeah. So I'll chuck these two reprobates in the back. And while we do that, I will. We decided this was the best shot, didn't we? This is what we're yeah. doing. This was given to me at Newark by Martin Ford, I believe. Pretty sure it was Martin Ford, yeah. Um, piece of elm. It's very dry. It's quite big. Where's my ruler? I did something with my ruler. There it is. It's almost five inches deep and it's ten and a half inches across. So the plan is I'm going to do a closed form bowl. So the lid or the lip or the rim is going to roll over the top and then I'll undercut on the other side. So because it's dry, I'm not going to uh, core it. So I am going to put all the shavings all over the floor. As you can see, I'm wearing my face mask because I've done a, just a couple of little test cuts and it's quite dusty and it was flying around all over the place. So just for the initial roughing down, I'm going to use the visor. And the first gouge is going to be a half inch swept back. Uh, Glenn Lucas, Hamlet Tools, bow gouge. I'm going to make a start. And these guys are going to look after you. Tell me what's happening. Tell me who's in. Oh. Where you go. Right then. Uh, to start off with, we've got Hugh in. We've got Gerard in. We've got Roy in. Hi, Roy. Enjoy your holiday. Yeah, uh, good weather Pete's for you. He was down this way. Yeah, he was. Uh, Rob from Copper Elves in. Uh, Brian with a Y's in. Hold on, wait. No, I'm just got just got to stop you there a sec. Go on. I've just had a note. Just had a notification. I'm live, so I'm going to go and watch that. All right. Yeah, yeah you go. go. I'll, I'll carry on doing this. <coughs> we got Andy Door Sixty uh, just come in. Oh, not just come in, but uh, Mike Evans, Raymond Wise. Wards in from Arizona. Tony Smith. Nick Hughes. Des Barnwell. Roger Kent. Susie from Switzerland. Steve Hill. Todd at Glencove Woodwork. Still going down to Ords, jumping all over the place now. Terry Bartlett. Lucy's in. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Joe Garofalo's in. And Rob from Clingspo's in. Good evening, Rob. James Crawford. Graham Hain, Kev at 9K, Douglas, Douglas, Jennifer's Craft and Creation, Hi, Jennifer, Barry Tiddy, hi Barry, Stephen Gordon, Fred Gulliver, still going down. Jason Leveron. Oh, 
Oh, no, it's Andy is in as well. Jamie's in. Hi, Jamie. Can we go over here, please, Matt? He, he started singing. Broken wings. Oh, God. <laughs> we over the Zoom. Paul Heaton's in. Oh, going down. Right, that's me at the bottom. I think I've gotten everybody. If I have missed you, I do apologise. Um, stick your name in and I'll get the... Uh, Andy, the Valley Wood Turner and Stumby's in. Well, Stumby's already in, but um, here's Andy. And Doug Miller's just come in. Howdy, everybody. Thank you for coming along. So you're doing a push cut on this now, Mark? Yeah, push cut now. And Jimmy's just said, is this your third ball? Oh, sorry. It's not Saturday Night Mint. So, push cut to that point, and because I don't want the tool overhanging too much, turn the lathe off, pick a cut up again. Actually, I've got a question for Rob, Rob of Kingsport. I'm putting a video on Facebook tomorrow with um, Kingsport Belt. Is there a hashtag that I should use? It's a bit pointy here, so I'm just going to transition this a bit better. And Gerard, the French Turner, has just put in um, to Rob at Clingsport. Just received the belt, the belt from your favourite reseller, and he'll be trying them tomorrow. That must be marked. Yeah. Oh no, it's Andy, you said. Careful, Wayne. Mark might catch up with your speed, except the wings, of course. Well, you can't go so fast with a clip wing, can you? Mark and I actually did a, a speed competition together. I think yeah, I lost it on there. I messed it up. <laughs> I messed it up, I let you beat me. And yeah, right. And Mick Hughes said, Wayne, it's a shame you've not got some memes to play with. Um, funny you should say that, Mick, because I'm not doing memes on my lives anymore. That's better. And Raymond Wise has just put in, totally love the effort you guys have put in. It's very valuable to me and the rest of the guys in the chat and others. Cheers, Mark. Yeah, thank you very much. It's, um, that's a reward we're mostly looking for. And Kevin Nank Creations has said, Rob, been using some of your finest today. Very impressed. And I would say that's to Robert Clingsport. To tell you the truth, I haven't met anybody that isn't impressed with Clingsport abrasives. No, I haven't either. Trying to speak down a little bit. I say I wasn't quite so happy with their sounding discs. But I got like a five-year st stock of um, discs from Simon Hope that I'm still working my way through. So, yeah, the, the MIG users uh, said to me, "Are you fed up of editing, editing them out, Wayne?" He's talking about the memes again. Yes, Mick, exactly. <laughs> And Robert Klingspoor said, I am so happy you guys finally getting the stuff to try. Been a long fight to get to this point. Um, thank you very much, Rob, for for fighting to get this stuff out there. 
uh, yeah. I know it's probably been difficult considering in the UK it's more used in metalwork than woodwork. And the adverts are obviously on on Coronation Street because Kim has popped in to say hi. Oh, I've just missed Kim coming in. Hiya, Kim. Hi, oh, there Kim. she is. How are you doing, darling? Hold on, I've got to cut. Hold on. Kim's in, so I've got to cut to uh, this camera just to show her. There it is. Potatoes. Potatoes. Potatoes is in. She made me buy that yesterday at a car boot sale. Don't ask why. <clears throat> why? Oh, see, you had to ask. You had to invite me. Uh, why did we buy it? Oh, yeah, to put things. I bought some snacks, so I've got snacks in the in the uh, workshop. Ah. Somewhere right. to keep them, so Kevin said, um, I, I think to you, Pete, he was using the cloth backed 150 and the super large net, net abrasive. Yeah, as I said, I've been impressed with everything I've used so far, apart from the disc. Um, but part of that is because I'm so used to using the same disc all the time that um, my expectations might be different. Well, I use the net abrasive um, on my discs, but they're not discs, as everybody knows. I've just cut them square. Yeah. And they are the best I've ever used. I've got this here. Yeah, I just got from Mark. I've got a couple of samples of the 120 grit um, three inch disc, 75 mil disc, whatever they are. So, uh, just using the calipers there with the speed sizer, and I was in two minds whether to do a tenon or a mortise. I decided to go with a tenon. Yeah, we also were that big. Hey, so is that a 50 mil tenon you're putting on this? Uh, it's slightly bigger. Slightly bigger. The, yeah, the tenon for the sea jaws is... Sea jaws. So it's 54 mil, I believe. Yeah. 54 mil, okay. Three, and Mick Hughes has said... Yeah, that's 54. A really nice, yeah, uh, <laughs> Mick said that's a really nice ball blank, Mark. Maybe you should let me turn it. <laughs> Chris from Billy's Woodworks just come in. And Green Haven Creations just come in as well. Oh, and Alex of Wooden Things. Good evening, everybody. Fred's asking about your shop, Mark. Uh, Mark and I were talking about the shop today. We're working on it. Um, Getting there. It should be up soon. Oh no, it's Andy has said, Lucy, I'm going to run Terry over in my wheelchair the next time I see him. Well, that's what Terry did last year at, um, at Harrogate. He ran everybody over. Yeah, he, he did. did. I'm just going to move the uh, tailstock out of the way. You know, been banned from using that um, wheelchair. Doctor said it was um, because of his hip, but actually it was just a request from everybody else. Yes. Right. Okay, don't they? Don't the Robert stuff. Hodge Hodge is in. Sorry, uh, Mark go on. Go with yourself, done all the 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 bulk stuff, so I'm gonna take the visor off. Right. Right, so Robert Hodgepodge Hodgepodge um I said, so for some odd reason, his video from Sunday has now had over 100,000 views. 
and over 95% is from an external source. Very good, Robert. Brilliant. And he's also said, he's also said it's one of his crappiest projects. It's often the way. And Andy is said, very uh, yeah. Mark. Mark, congratulations. Go on. Well, um, right, um, and Andy has said, Mark, congratulations on spitting your grinder guard. Well, one of them at least. Just a slightly bigger foot. There's my pencil. Yeah, I think that this does need slightly bigger foot. Okay. Raymond Wise is asking, how expensive is it to set up three cameras in the workshop? It's not that expensive. Yeah, you can. You can get fairly cheap cameras from. Go on, Mark. I'll let you explain this. Well, because so you can you did, you can go for the fourteen pound webcams, or you can go for thirty five pound webcams, or you can spend a hundred pound on webcams. Now, I don't mean to sound facetious, but if you spend fourteen quid on a webcam, you get a fourteen quid's worth webcam. It might last four or five months at best. And then it'll break down, it'll glitch. You can't run them through a powered hub. Uh, you can't run long extensions on them. So bite the bullet early on, spend upwards of 50 quid on decent webcams. 65, 70 quid will buy you the C920s, which is what I'm using. This one here isn't, this is a desk one. And if I switch to tailstock straight away you can see the color difference is better and it's, it's just an all-round better picture this was a 75 pound webcam the other one was a 25 pound webcam the other thing that you need to have is a computer with lots of usb ports because if you try to run cameras, like Mark's already said, if you try to run cameras through a powered USB, a lot of the time, the powered USB, when it comes into the likes of OBS or StreamYard, can't differentiate between the cameras. And you get problems then as well. Now, Kev's just asked another question, Mark. Was that making the foot a third of the width? Yeah. Right, about Sorry? that. About that. It doesn't always be a third of the width. It's what looks better. The first one I did was a third of the width. It didn't look right. Go with your eye. That this rules are meant to be broken or challenged. And if it looks good, then it probably is. Yep. I think, I, I think for the bigger diameter and that this is going to be a chunky bowl, I think it needed a wider foot. So I've, okay. I've gone with a foot that's out here now. That's going to be the foot. This is all sacrificial. Okay. Yes. No, Dan, Dan is in the, is the, chat. In the, chat. He's in the back room. I see Jamie saying he's used cheapo, cheapo cameras right off the bat. He's run them all through powered hubs and OBS. You can get away with it, not always. Well, I would say that the possibly the most expensive part is <coughs> figuring out how to mount the cameras. It's not expensive because camera mounts are expensive. It's because you'll buy some 
realise they're working and buy some more. Um, getting your cameras secured so they're pointing yeah, in the right place and it. they're not in your way. That's the big challenge, really. I've got uh, to say, I mean, then okay, but um, and I know I know a guy, but I have. I have not paid anything for any of my cameras because they have all been gifts. And yeah. I've still got about four that I need to get hooked up. And I've upgraded all my cameras now. I've got Brios everywhere, um, which requires a better computer to run them. Um, as I said, the bit that I've changed the most the other is thing the way I secure them. Yeah, the, the other thing I would say is that you, you've, if, if you are going to do anything like this, like Mark's doing, like I do, um, like Pete does and everything, you need to have decent Wi-Fi on the way you do it. Would one pause just come in? The computer I use, um, it was a refurb computer, uh, but it's actually got, I, I think it's 10 USB slots. So all of the cameras can go into USB slots and various other things. I do have a powered uh, USB hub, which basically just does the, the keyboard, uh, the mouse, and uh, my headphones. I'll just clean this turning up. The computer that Mark's using is exactly the same as I'm using my workshop. I stole it from a customer who um, returned it when he upgraded. I give it a quick refurb and gave it to Mark. Uh, but at the same time as I built that one for the customer, I built one for myself. So we're both running oh, exactly the same spec of computers. Mr. Farinison. <laughs> yeah, Jim, Jimmy's just oh, said. I... Yeah, but I'll, I'll get this to you in a minute. But Jimmy's just said, win. Telling people they need to have good Wi Fi, lol. And it's yeah. actually humor, it seems. <laughs> Yeah, that, that I have had ironic. fairly decent Wi-Fi for for a while now, and like like um, Mark said, Stuart's in. Good evening, Stuart. Good evening. Hello, so, Stuart. Right now, unlike and Mike is in from um, Dancing with Ardvox. Hello, Mike. Unlike a lot of my my lives, uh, I skimp on the finishing because it's. Like well, you YouTube do a lot life. of lives, do you? <laughs> Shut up. Um, but I'm not going to do that tonight. But I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to do it properly, he says. We'll see. Right. So I'm going to do a combination of power sanding, hand sanding. I'm going to use true grids. I'm going to use proper finishes. I'm going to do it all in the right order. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, so we're going to start with 120 grit with power sanding. Uh, once 120 power, then hand. I'm going to alternate between power sanding and hand sanding. So I'm going to turn this on so you guys can talk about me because I will be able to hear what you say. And Rob has just said, skim bun. What? Okay, we can roll on be friends. And Dan went true grit, uppercase, boom. Dan, I'm checking the link here and you can explain it. Jason, if you talk to any, but any of us that do YouTube, um, we've all been through the learning curve of how to position and work cameras and switch cameras. Um, bring us a message, we'll talk to you about it, no problem. Yeah, also, um, a lot of people, apart from using OBS, use StreamYard as well. So within OBS, you can click on something called Virtual Camera, 
Uh, there are various devices out there for changing cameras. Um, I think Pete, you, Pete and Mark use a different system to I do. Yeah. Or to the one that I use. I should say. The two leaders are, are um, Stream Deck and Touch Portal. Effectively, they're just fancy external keyboards that run on an Android device or an iPad device or something similar. Um, they're just external keyboards as well, gives you easy switching. Yeah, Philip Muscle just come in. Pete, is that the link for the um for the raffle? For the raffle. Okay, Pete yeah. just put a link in there. You might have to go back in the chat to see it, but Pete just put a link in there. I think there are about eight or nine tickets left for the uh, Arbitech raffle. Um so people can go along, like I see eight or nine tickets left. We will be promoting it tomorrow night on my live as well, tomorrow night. No, Mike from Dances with the Aardvarks is he's just starting to make another ten security goblet. Oh, sweet! Abrasives are brought to you tonight by Clingsport. <laughs> oh no, Dandy said, when the system you use is still powered by steam. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've got plenty of water to make the steam, so yeah. Well, that's true. And Dan's just put in, there are five tickets left. And this is for the Arbitec Long Neck Grinder, I believe. A uh, mini carver, it's called. Oh, the mini carver, sorry. The mini carver. All the, the, some of the proceeds certainly are going towards the. Well, up again, then, then. Here we go. Emerging turners. turners. That's the one. That's it. And it's a limited number of tickets, and it's two hundred and fifty-six pounds worth of prize um, for a limited number of ten-pound tickets. So it's um, reasonable odds of winning. All right, yeah. we, have, we have encountered a slight problem. Come on, then. There's nothing we can't fix. So there is a crack just here. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it. Just there. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So I'm just going to treat this with some, I think, some black CA. Give it a bit of contrast. Some of these rings have got some black in them. Yeah, so I, it first, it's quite dry. Yes, that's what I was just going to say. So, Is that the pit right there? Well, could well be. There's one I'm there. I'm too sure. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it could yeah. be a branch. Might be yeah. a branch. So I'm going to um, just treat the area that I'm going to glue with some sanding zealer first. This is a neat little trick because this will stop the bleed out. bleed out of the glue into the surrounding area. So don't do the whole thing. And William Rose Creates has just come in and there are only four tickets left. Now if Colin is watching, he'll be pleased to know that... Uh, the sanding sealer I'm using is thin 6040. So I'm on the hit list as well. <laughs> uh, well of course, depending on what the sanding sealer base is, because. Norman Green was just come in. Sorry, Pete, what's up? Just depending on the sanding sealer base, because I use Libron and they've not threatened me at all yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm just going to grab. Is that acrylic not... sand and sealer or cellulose? That was cellulose. Okay. So I'm just grabbing a um, what are they called? Um, micro nozzles. 
Oh, oh yeah, God. the needle, the needle nozzles. Yeah, cup one hundred's in. Hello, Dan. Hiya. I'll, I'll take Hi, off Dan. screen really quick. <laughs> no, Ben Jamin says, Mark, try fifty eight forty two. Absolute game changer. Alan Gibbs just come in. Sorry, Ben, I wait to see you elaborate on that a bit. Your dilution quantities. Right. Oh, you want, right. You, okay. you want Ben to elaborate on something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Are you going to talk to us then, Dan? You've got to fix his hair first, mate. He okay. can't talk to he's got his hair right. I'm just trying to sort my hair out because it looks ridiculous. Yeah, well, the Kev, Kev has just said, it, Dan, it always looks windy where you've been. Well, <laughs> so, uh, right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make it an honest. I, I hate to tell you this, Dan, but it's not all about you. You're not on the screen at the moment. Oh, that's all right. That gives me time there. No, but I was just going to make an honest admission because I've, I've realised kind of accepting that I'm losing the front bit of my hair now. It's kind of the front bit's definitely on its way. Oh, and, um, dear me. But, so I opted, for like a, I opted for like a shaved side and ponytail. But what I've realised is that if I don't have it in a ponytail now, it just looks ridiculous. So, yeah, I mean, obviously... I don't care. Obviously, Mark doesn't have that problem, but uh, for people... Yeah. Do. I don't have that problem either, Dan. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, you can both bugger off. All right. Yeah. Such a prima donna these days, aren't you? Come on, my Oh, show. yeah, definitely. Well, you know, got to keep up, keep up the standards. Oh, have you seen what Rob's put in there, Dan? I, I can't because I'm on my phone, so I actually can't read the. Um... All right, so so Rob from Clingsport has put in, okay, so now we call you come over, Dan. No, it's not quite a come over yet. No, it, it's heading that way. I'm not going to let it get that bad though. Is that is it, is it going to be come over, Dan, or Dan Trump, or? or... No, I, I'm, I'm going to accept my fate by then. <laughs> this is a last stand, is this? It's like the last last stand of of a hairdo. Right. Oh no, it's Andy. You said Mark uses washing gun nowadays. <laughs> Mark, Mark Kevin's put in. Ke Ke Kevin's put in washing gun. Oh, washing went. <laughs> I'm sure Clings for a lot of products that Mark said soon enough. Lionel has just come in. Evening, Lionel. Oh, can you meet just for a minute? He can't mute because he can't hear me. Yeah, Roy's the boy is just coming back with Dan. Come back to the man bun. Right, that's better. Let's fix the crack. Right, so we've done 120. Both uh, power sand and, and sand, so we're up to 180 now. Imagine that noise is like living next to me. I designed a room to um, stop this noise for Mark. Oh, it got to be six months ago. I've offered to go down and build it for him. All you got to do is buy a double glazed door to go on the front of it. 
I still haven't gone down there because you haven't bought it yet. What was the reference to man bun before, Wayne? Oh, God, I'll have to go back. Sorry, I can't. I can't oh, I can't. that... that... That was Roy, Roy's the boy. He said, comb it back and have a man bun. That's what I've gone for. I'm, 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 I've gone for man bun. We've shaved sides. I've, it's the first time in my life I've ever actually um, had a hairstyle. Granted, it looks crap, but still. Yeah, right. but it'll grow out. A little bit of product will. placement there from Mark. I wonder, ooh, yeah. what abrasive that is that Mark's using. That yeah, could be upside down, so I can't tell. <laughs> upside down. Just had the bedroom door closed on me for being too loud. Um, Rob says that by the hey. end of June, Mark will have 50 millimeter sanding discs for the in inertia sanders. Right, Douglas is asking uh, to Rob at Clingspore, do you sell different sized belts? Now, I don't know by that if he means different grids or different lengths of belts. If it's different grids, uh, I know he does. Um, and no, he also the, does no, the oxide Rob's, and the ceramics. Yeah, but Rob's come back and saying, yes, we can make any size belt. Now, the thing is, with a lot of uh, Clingspore stuff, I, I know we, we have a bit of a laugh with Rob and everything on, on our lives and everything, but with a lot of Clingspore stuff that you buy in the UK, you do have to go to a distributor, not direct to Rob. Now, and there, are, there is a growing number of distributors now. Um, Mark is one. Yandles is also a distributor. I'm sure there's many others I don't know about, but um, that's my two local guys. So. It depresses me to say it, but the um, that um, that net product that you showed me at the uh, at Makers Wayne was looking very good. Yes, um, okay. I I had a bit of a chat with um, one of the guys from from Burger. <laughs> Uh, well, we were at makers, and I said, although I do like Merger, and I'm, I, I always have, but I find, I find the, the Klingspore one a little bit better. Um, and, but again, that's my opinion, and I've been working with Rob since last September, I think. Um, they are good. They, they are very good. That is not to say Merca on. Merca is a very, very good product. It's in fact that it's really it's an exceptional product, and I'm sure Rob would would agree with me on this as well. No, I think I, I said at the time. I think my I mean my history with Merca goes back. Go, Merca and wood turning goes back about twenty years. Yeah, um, but um, but it, yeah, it's it's that is by far the best one I've seen that's going to compete. And I'm not I'm not just saying that because I've tried a few, and there's a few out there already that are. You know, Merker, oh, Merker on are, the net. The, the, Merker on the net are, the patent for years. The, but. The, there's a lot on there that, that do um, net products, um, abrasive products, and they are absolute garbage. If you excuse the word crap. Yeah, well, yeah. garbage is a good word, yes. Yeah. 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 But no, yeah, I, 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 I was quite I was quite impressed with that, and like I say, we've we've been loyal to Merca for absolutely years, and and Merca products are brilliant. But but you're right, it's definitely a it's definitely another one out there now. Right, so back with the sanding cedar all over now. So that's sanded up to four hundred, just because it's a special piece of wood. You really only need to go two forty, maybe three twenty. Because I'm going to use abrasive paste wax, true grit. Now, Rob's just put in there, Rob's come back and said, Merca are a very good company. They make some amazing products. Uh, they are amazing if you're doing paint finishes. Um, 
I, I can't just tell you the truth. I can't remember the first time I used Mercury. It must have been a hell of a lot of bloody years ago, though. Yeah, same here. Such a really pretty piece of wood, this. I don't think I've ever used Mercury. It is, Mark. It is. I'm sure you have, Mark. It's Abernet. Yeah. To be honest, I've never used Abernet. Well, I'll tell a lie. I used it when I first started making pens. I bought I don't know, half a dozen sheets and I was so horrified by how expensive it was. I stopped using it almost expense ex instantly. I used to buy it in 10 meter rolls and it was, um, yeah, it was expensive, but it lasted quite well. I um I think I think the one thing that I've, I think I've said this I said this to the Mercards the one I don't know if it's the same with um, Le Clingspot the Merc product if you buy it in sheet form in boxes of sheet you actually get better value buying it in sheets than you do in rolls and it's it just seems completely crackers that they do it that way that actually right. <laughs> a product that's processed less costs more it just seems bonkers I don't know if that's the same for Clingspot but it definitely was for Merca. Piece of paste. Oh, it's a quality product, Mark. It is, Dan. <laughs> it is, I was using it today. I'm just going to mute myself. I'm, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne's being a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's not muted himself for that reason. It did, did sound that way, though. Like, I must <laughs> be, is it time to go? <laughs> But no, I'd be, I'd be interested to. Um, I, I think the the Abernet Ace. I don't know if anyone's ever used Abernet Ace. That's like a. That's like their next evolution of it, which is pretty good as well. But I'd, actually, the Klingspor stuff doesn't seem to rip in the same way that the Abernet does. And I'd just like to say, Colwyn, if you're watching, mate, this I is how you use. It. This is how you right? use True Grit. Sorry, what was that, Pete? I was taking the green says, the forest is coming late. What is the wood, please? Elm. Is it elm, that? Started off it's... as um, ten and a half inch by four and a half inch, something like that. I always question what timber it is with Mark, though, because I'm pretty sure that he thinks beech is sycamore. I swear to God, man. Once. Oh, he admits it now. I don't know. I didn't even get that wrong. Well you, well, you just admitted that you were wrong, so... No, it was just controversy at once over one lot of... Mind? Don't forget, I can see you, Dan. They can't, but I can. Yeah, it's looking better, and I've tied it up. Oh, no, it's Andy, so he's still using Glyn's stuff that you gave him. Now, I can say I was there when that was given to you, and that was two years ago, over two years ago. Anyway, can I, can I finish taking the mickey out of Colwyn, please? Oh, Colwyn. Colwyn used True Grit the other day on one of his Sax Mr. Lives. And Dan and I both shuddered at the way he put it, the way he applied it, with the lathe running. <laughs> he applied with the lathe stationary and work it in. I didn't know. It's, to be honest, I was just impressed that it were on Sax Mr. Lives. Yeah, well, you were lying in a puddle on the floor, so. Yeah. As yeah. I used to say about another very very similar product, it's a gel. It's a it's a it's a liquid in suspension with slight thickness to it. If you put it on a, a running lathe, you're gonna wear it on your on your glasses or your face shield or whatever you wear. Yeah, exactly. Wait, back. So I'll stop talking about him now. Shh. Just about to unmute himself. Wayne's back. <laughs> Hi, Wayne. Sorry about that, guys. For some reason, I've been sitting here that long. My gin evaporated is in the glass. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible, that. <laughs> Wasn't just as Drew Grick came on the screen. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Timing. Mark Stroughton's in. Hi, Mark. I see, my wife, uh, she's got a study that she spends most of her time in. And... It must be very hot up there because drinks just evaporate so quick up there. 
What's with the same here? Gin, whiskey, vodka, whatever it is, it just evaporates. Too expensive is alcohol. So I've worked the uh, trick right in. Now I'm gonna. It's done its job. Just gonna bring the speed up a little bit. Twelve hundred. Just buff it off. Buff off any right. residual. So Andy is um, saying to me, no us back tonight, Wayne. No, Andy. We have got one bottle of us back in the house at the moment, which is one I bought Jane for Christmas, and she hasn't even opened it yet. She said she's keeping it for a special occasion, which will be June the 11th. Because that's her birthday. Yeah. That was 11 days before my dear wedding anniversary. June was a terrible month. It was my wedding anniversary on the 11th, my daughter's birthday on the 12th, and my first wife's birthday on the 15th. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. It Sorry, is not... very. What you were saying was nice as well, Pete, but. It is a pretty, pretty piece of wood. Yep. Uh, right, so. That's a the abrasive paste. Let's give it a finish. So, Kevin here said that that wood has got very strange markings. It, it's a, it's spalt as elm, Kev. It's quite typical for elm these days, actually. So I'm using Hampshire Sheen high gloss. Less Mark is more. Has just come in. Dan Marquez was here when you were uh, trying All right, to track okay, down your they, evaporated gin. Okay, he's just saying hello to everybody then. Oh, apparently it's Rob's birthday. It's, Ro it's Rob's birthday today. Happy birthday, Rob. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rob. Happy birthday to you. That's it. That's I think getting. you've just lost about 20 viewers doing that, Mark. Well, it was yeah, me exactly. or Wayne. Exactly. One of us was going to see. I'm counting, th I'm counting 35 on here. It still yeah. says 67 on my screen. Yeah, but it was 92 <laughs> before. I actually just gone over to look at um, the number of people in them. And I gave a thumbs up while I was there because he hadn't done bad, really, has he? Could have been worse. Well, okay, okay, all right. I'll, I'll, give, oh, I'll just, give you that, Pete. I've just noticed that um, we've sold out our raffle tickets. Oh, oh well brilliant! Done. Guess what you're doing tomorrow night on Wayne's Live, then? <laughs> yeah. So I need to sort that out now. Well, I mean that—that's brilliant. He's sat there for five. He's just sat there taunting me for the last few weeks. Is that? We've been. It has. Busy. Yes, it, it's it's been for about the past five weeks. That, that's we've been. Sat, well, we've just had too much on with. With makers and everything else, it's not something I've really plugged overly hard about. Excuses, excuses. Ward has just said, Does that grinder in the background have a shield on it? I yeah, it does. Wrong channel. It does. Oh, yeah. it doesn't on the CBN wheel, but it does on the other side. No, you don't yeah, need one. Well, okay. Right, Dan, do you, do you want to draw the winner tomorrow night or do you want to draw the winner on Saturday night on me live or uh, do you want to do it some other way or what? Um, I'm just trying to think what commitments I've got tomorrow. I uh, should be able to tomorrow if you're up for that. I won't. I probably yeah, won't. Be fine, mate. I probably Sorry, won't. I didn't mean to pressure you into time to do it. <laughs> no, it needs doing. It, it's The sooner it's done, the better. I, the sooner I can move on to something else. Um. So yeah, I'll um, I'll drop you a message later and uh, we'll sort it out. Right, so this is all right with you. This is uh, yeah, Mark that's fine. Mate. Going on now. What is it, Mark? Sorry, say that again. Microcrystalline wax going on now. This is chestnut microcrystalline. On top of Hampshire Sheen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they don't fight or anything. It's fine. You're going for yeah, it now. That, 
this is the thing that I like. Not a lot of people know this, or not a lot, a lot of people have taken notice of people that do this. You can put a wax onto a piece of wood, usually a softer wax, the likes of the um, the Hampshire Sheen High Gloss, the Hampshire Sheen Original, uh, Chestnut Products Wood Wax uh, 22. <clears throat> you can put them on as a base coat onto a piece and then put the microcrystalline wax on as a finishing coat over the top of it. And it is works the, absolutely brilliant. Is the high gloss yeah. not a microcrystalline wax anywhere, though, Wayne? It's got it some might have crystalline in it. But it's, it's, it's a cocktail of the two. It's it's not a pure it's not a pure microcrystalline. Alright. Uh, right, okay, if you if if you take them a, a, a better uh, representation would be uh chest and product wax twenty two. If you use that as a base coat and then use the microcrystalline wax as a top coat, you will get an absolutely brilliant finish with it. Mm -hmm. Can't say I've ever done that. The Woodwax 22 doesn't get used on that many lives. No. Purely because it, it really requires a bit of drying time after you put it on. Um, mm. So the best way to use it is to put it on, go make a cup of coffee, buff it off, but then it's a beeswax, carnauba wax cocktail. Mm. So putting a microcrystal near the top gives you the hard finish. Hmm. Yeah, really ben is asking awesome. Ben's asking what does the base code do though? It's exactly what it says, Ben. It it gives a base for the um for the harder wax to go on to. Because making crystalline wax is a hard wax. Um it, for something that gets handled a hell of a lot. It doesn't show up um, fingerprints, handprints, things like this. I think you should wear those. Um, I mean, I wouldn't for turning, but I think you should wear those black gloves all the time, Mark. I, think, I feel like there should be some sort of headgear that goes with it, though. And they're all right for turning because they tell you. My gimp days are over. I've told you that before. <laughs> I always say if you're going to wear gloves, turn it. Make sure it'll tear easier than skin. If anybody, if anybody needs a website to mark gimp days, uh, <laughs> just send me send me a message and I will send you a link. You promised you wouldn't. <laughs> you promised. A little bit off. The base coat gives you your basic shine. Microcrystalline is effectively a transparent um, cover point. So you, your beeswax, carnauba wax. Um, and I, I'm not fond of beeswax because most of what I sell get sold in shops. So a thousand people are going to pick it up and hold it before it gets sold. So I'm not a fan of beeswax because it's, it's not that it melts easy, but it, its melting point and its sticky point are different. You get to about 35 degrees, it gets soft enough to dust to stick to it. Um, it's, it's just a, it's a matter of choice. At the end of the day, if you put that microcrystal over the top, it's got a hard shell over the top of it, which doesn't get affected by being in the sunshine in front of a window in a dusty room. Um, it doesn't get affected by fingerprints. Right. Uh, and Pete, it's also Pete, vegan friendly because it's made from petrochemicals rather than beeswax. So, yeah. It's we, vegan got friendly a, on the whole. Right, we've got a couple of questions coming here. Kevin 9K, 9K Creations has said his microcrystalline wax is melted in the tin. Very roomy. Any good? Yeah, it'll still be good. Take it into the house and put it somewhere cool so it um, stiffens up again. Um. Andy, uh, Valley Wood Turner, has said, what finish would you apply to a baby's rattle or toys? Right, I would apply either nothing, really is depending on what the wood is, or a food safe finish. And you can buy loads of food safe finishes. They don't yeah. have to be wood turning ones. You can buy loads of food safe finishes from the likes of Home Base, B&Q, and places like this. Have you got your tail stuck on there, Mark? No. 
Remember, the food says that generally ten, means the, that if you eat it, it won't hurt you. That tenon's off. Tenon's off. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is some reason. Yeah, there is some reason that tenon is off. How easy is it to lift your tail stuff back on? It's easy enough, but I don't understand why. Because that was a textbook tenon. Give it under 80 degree tone and see what it's like. I think you need to do some uh, <laughs> re research on tenons. <laughs> Or maybe clear all the dust out of the chuck. Why don't you why don't you do an internal one instead, Mark? Really didn't want to do an internal. I was out. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's better. It's a little bit better. Oh central. That's that's the weird thing. Have you gone over the edge with wax or something? Is it, is that why it's looking like It might bubbly? be, yeah. Let me clear this face. Yeah, it could just be a slight slope on the face causing it to look. The top, the top edge actually looks all right, I think. See, this is the difference between what Mark does on his lives and what I do on my lives. I just hide back on and just turn stuff. You ought to be finished by now, where? Eh? Well, yeah, I did say before you came in, Dan, that I'm, I'm making a conscious effort not to be a, a YouTube wood turner tonight. So, oh. tonight, Dan, <laughs> tonight, Dan, I'm being just a wood turner. Oh. Conscientious and everything. Wayne has been asked by the Forestry Commission to slow down Can a I bit. Just see it. running out of trees. Yeah, yeah. C can I just say, if Mark was actually doing this in his workshop on a daily basis, this would have been finished, and probably two more balls would have been finished as well. Yeah, it does make a difference. As soon as you turn the camera on, it changes the whole game. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the last person to comment on videos, because I bet I won't do them if I don't do them. See, to me, it doesn't make any difference. I do it live. I do it on the videos. I do it in demonstrations. <laughs> it's still all the same speed. Yeah. Well, I've, got, I've got a demo on Wednesday night. Oh, I'm, oh my life. I know. I know. Sorry, say that again. That I'm massively un unprepared for. I've You've got a, got a demo. I've got a demo on Wednesday night, yeah. Uh, on, not Wednesday night, on uh, Friday night. Say, so, you doing the raffle? We're doing that. Right? That is a very good question. Let's just look back through my emails and work it out. It's uh, it's not Trafford. It's uh, one of the Manchester clubs. Uh, oh, nice. Well, after declaring, I'm never doing another demo in the rest of my life. I've signed up for two more last week. I just don't. I just don't. I, I should do more of them, but I just don't have the time. And I do get, I get asked for loads, but I just, I just can't stop out, really. Well, the thing is that, like, the, the total difference there, the, if anybody that doesn't know, uh, Dan is from Tillers Murfield, and really, with what he's doing with his shop at the moment, and the training area, and everything else that's, that's going on, he, he doesn't have the time to do, like, demos. No, I don't. I'll be I'll be glad when we get back to a point where um, I feel like I've got a bit more time, but. Tell the couching shop. We've started moving the classroom around this week, so. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Oh, oh no, it's Andy has said the trouble of us doing on your own is you get a low class of insults. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> oh, 
think Donna lovely and Joe must be for me. Hi Donna. Hi Donna. Um, Rob is asking me, Dan, is your shop just online or is it a physical shop? It's a physical no, shop. It's proper Rob. walking. Yeah, it's a it's a proper shop. It'll which be even more of a just, even more of a proper shop once it's all finished. Yeah, which is just going around another change around. Yeah, well, it's weird because actually, Katie's been painting the floor today, um, and um, it's uh, it's about three years since I last painted that floor, and I've got it keeps coming up with memories of when we were doing that unit up. And for people that don't know, I think this is your. Third shop, is it done? Um, it's the third unit on that site. Yeah, the third unit, yeah. Um, we, um, we had a the, tiny the little first unit. Two, the first two flooded, am I right? Yeah, we had, a, we had a tiny little unit on the front, which we, we outgrew, but then we flooded just after, I want to say just after Harrogate, one of the years, just after Harrogate. Yeah. And, um, so we moved it to one around the corner and then it. So we never actually got we never actually got that one open to the public before we we outgrew that one and moved into the third one. Uh, we've been in the third unit now, coming up to three years though. Oh right, that long. Dear it's, me. Yeah, it's tech, yeah, it's, it, you wouldn't believe it, would you? But yeah. Right, can I just say to Mark, um, we are we are getting a lot of machinery noise there, Mark. Oh yeah, right. Let me just check my sound then, because Jabber did do a. Yeah, he did not make okay, it. Okay. I'm on the Jabra. Yeah, with well, I've, I've checked mine. I've checked mine and done the firmware and everything, but I was getting a lot of machinery noise my last couple of few lives. Test, test. Right, uh, yeah. Rob. From the, right, this is for you, Dan. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob from Kling Sport has said, um, "We would love to have you sell our stuff." We supply fire stands, uh, sorry, the stands and everything. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave that to, to you and Rob to get in touch with each other. Yeah, he's a, he, by all means, drop us an email and um, we'll have a look. Like I say, I'm, uh, we, we're very much expanding at the moment in terms of the shop. We were over at, um, when we got back from Maker Central, we went straight over to Snainton's over at Scarborough. Um, because since they announced they were closing, we've, we've been talking and we just picked up all their wood racks. Um, so we're going to have quite a big, well, hoping to have a, a large supply of wood coming soon. Um, so there's loads going on. It's just cracking. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was really, it was really strange. Um, go on. So for Rob, if, if you want to get in touch with, uh, with Dan, it's uh, Taylor's Murfield. Um, they've got the they've got the website. Have they got princess. contact details on the website? <laughs> Sorry, did you say that out loud? I don't know what you said. Oh, eight hundred princess. That's your name. Uh, yeah. uh, Mark, do you want to just check the depth before you go any further? Yeah, just because you, you've got the outside to do yet. Check the depth. He's got about four inches there in the depth. Yeah. He's probably got an inch and a half, I reckon. Try Maybe three. Two inches. Uh, go another inch and then work your um, sides out. About two inches, is it? Two and an eighth. Oh, dear. Right. Oh, okay, uh, Douglas has just said, and I was talking about the noise earlier, um, the turning noise is overriding the earworm's turn. Uh, talk. There is something happening with Jabra at the moment where it's not doing the noise reduction. And yet, yeah, when the extractor on, the second time it did work. The first time it didn't. So something weird is going on. I think 
That's where I want to be. So are though. Bloody rock hard, this stuff. Has to be oh, yes, drunk. it will be. Uh, yeah. So what's, what's your aim then, Mark? You're going for an even wall undercut then? Yeah, even wall undercut all the way down. Nice. Which is a little bit concerned that no matter how hard it is, it might flex a bit on that um, sidewall. When, uh, I'm really, really going to get over it. We had uh, Pat Carroll at Alpine um, last week, doing lessons. And he'd got some Jimmy Clunes, um calipers. And they'd actually got like a setting device on them. Um, I can't really explain them, but they were really, really quite clever calipers for the whole thing. The other thing that uh, Pat Carroll does um, for things like this in hollow form, he's got the, um, the the sonic depth finder as well. The pack the pack carol does them as well. Right. Andy for the net he's in. Evening, Andy. Right, Kev no. has said um, with Elm in such low quantities. I would have thought he would record it. We did talk about this uh, before Mark started the live tonight. We did talk yeah, you, about this. You lot really want to see me get a workout, don't you? Calling no, this. No, no. because of the shape of the bowl, because of the dryness of the bowl, this wouldn't have been a very good uh, um, live to do for a core. There was also a bit of a split in the side bowl that we couldn't evaluate at that point whether it would actually be a problem or not. So scoring is not always the answer. Mick User said, back again, everything went dark. I must have the same Wi Fi supplier as Wayne. <laughs> <coughs> The Wi-Fi supplier I've got at the moment is absolutely brilliant. Wayne's system has been fine for quite a while now, but it was bad. It it? is. It, it, it's a, um, the, the one I've got at the moment, it is a 4K wireless system I've got at the moment. Because there is no way I am getting fibre until at least uh, 2050, and then I won't care. Roy is asking you, Mark. Um, Hold on. He thinks he... Yeah, okay. Sorry. Uh, no, that's cup, fine. Mark. That's fine, mate. He's, he's asking if you're getting a, getting a bit of chattering going on there. No, no. There's no chatter. No, that was a lovely cut, then. Thank you. No, I just changed... To uh, an English grind. So I could get the undercut I wanted. Rob has got to go, he's got birthday cake, which he's going to bring out to all of us in, in a few minutes. If he can blow the candles out. And that, happy birthday again, Rob, I won't sing again. No, um, don't, please. That, that cut I was doing there, as I was going down in, I was actually cutting off the left-hand wing, which is, as Pete will attest, something that Glenn Lucas taught us last year. Yep. Yeah, I've, I've done that on a live, and... Um, yeah, that went wrong. There are cuts, wait. <laughs> there are cuts, especially that undercut curve. Well, it's not a beginner's cut. 
not not being funny, but it, it's not a beginner's cut. This is not something you should no. do until you're really confident about your tool control, your gouges, your bevel control, because you get it wrong and you'll wear it. Oh, oh yes, you will. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, I've done a lot and, and, it, and it flew off the lid. Get that lamb. Not a bad thing sometimes. I actually quite like to push my mortise and tenons to the extreme sometimes, just just to risk it coming off the lathe. Um, the other thing you, you have to the, the be Peter, aware with I, I, be, I believe on, the, on on that live that I did where I tried to do the the um, the, the left left side of bevel. I think I actually ruined two pieces on that live that night, and that was I think that was two or three years ago. But Wayne, even you can have things like that, you know, you're allowed. And I know you do an awful lot of lives and um, oh, a lot of demonstrations and all the rest there. of it, but hey. as soon as I put the cameras on, I make catches and, and mistakes that I would never make if I wasn't on camera. Um, and it, despite your experience, you must have the same to some extent that you're, you're, you're twisting your shoulder out of the way of the camera or something, so you're not quite as, yeah. as well positioned as you should be. Um, usually, uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say that usually things go wrong with me when I'm not on camera. Usually things go okay when I'm on camera. But Jamie has put on there, yeah, Wayne, learn how to try, learn how to turn before you try anything like that, lol. Go oh, back to calling yourself. I wasn't yourself. saying that. No, hang on. He, he said, go back to calling yourself, win the school, Sora, lol. <laughs> yeah, okay, Jamie. Cheers, mate. Wayne, you know I wasn't meaning that about you. I was saying that about everyone. Oh else. no, 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 no. Um, and Doug Miller has said maybe to Dan. that was that was an odd night, Wayne. Yeah, when I when I did that, I, I can't remember what I was doing first. But I did something first and it didn't work, and then I did. It was a piece of you that I was doing, and I, I'd said that people are doing the the left sided um, cut. And I tried it, and it flew, and it broke up and flew up all over the place. Mick User said, The only cock up I've seen Wayne do was stabbing himself with his skew chisel. Yeah, I remember that one as well, Mick. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember that. I was earworming for you for that. That you filled were? me. That filled me with confidence about using the skew. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, when I cut myself using the skew, I wasn't actually cutting a piece of wood. It was when I took the when I took the skew away from the piece of wood that it hit my hand and I got cut. We did. Um, we did. Me and Katie went down to Oxford last week for Tormek training. Um, that was very kindly put on by Tormek, and the guy came over and all that sort of stuff. And in the Tormek. There's actually a pack of plasters. Um, yes, there is. As as like a as like a very clever gimmick, but within the first minute of Clive of Tormek demonstrating how to sharpen a planer blade, he sliced his hand open. That's what I did. <coughs> oh, well, yeah, they it wasn't, it wasn't that actually plasters, sharp. Yeah, and I've used them. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd done a cut. With the, with the, the it was a new skew chisel that I'd been given by somebody, and I did a cut with the skew chisel, took it away from the piece, pulled it back, and cut my hand open. Yeah. So I, I wrapped it up with some tissue papers and carried on turning because it was live.
You see, the noise cancellation is working now. Yeah. It is, yeah. I, I, I... It's it hit and miss, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a shame it doesn't happen when Mark's talking. Jimmy has said, now this is a very good question, although the, the means it is funny. Jimmy has said, is that hole in Mark's tool rest for his popsicle? <laughs> okay, you know, I now, once got confused right, about this. Right. And I actually asked ser ser serious question. Serious question. What is that hole in the tool rest for? Right. I asked a supplier about this once. That one. Probably hanging said, it. Yeah. Hanging it. That's to really hang it when we spray it. Yeah. Yeah. Simple as they make a hole so they can hang it up and spray it. Yeah. There's a lot of things like that. Because it goes through that way. Doesn't go through that way. Goes through that way. Question yeah, for Dan here from. Um, question for Dan from Stuart Farini. Oh. Any progress in getting an, an invite to the Tormek Mansion? No, it's not the Tormek Mansion. It's the. Um, and, and no, I haven't had an invite to the Tormek Mansion. I presume that's just as good. No, it's the Merker Mansion that you want an invite to. And no, I, I haven't been invited to that either. The Mer Kevin, the Mer the Mer creations. Yeah. The Sorry, Dan, carry on. No, no I said the Merca Mansion in, in Finland has its own pub on site that's just free. You just go in and drink what you want. Yeah, I worked in a few places like that. Kevin, 9K Creations has said, I was shown a train... I was shown the tra trainee how to use the bandsaw, took my knuckle to the bone, got a tape, carried on. Okay. I've got a better story it's than that dirt. one. <laughs> just need to put a fresh edge on this. When um, when I used to work at, there was a, I don't know, I don't know if Wayne, you might remember, ASK Tools or Ask Tools in Bristol. They used to be a wood turning shop. Yeah. And I worked there as a sort of a 20 year old. But they also used to sell um, machinery into window manufacturers. All and, right, okay. And one of the one week, um, they rung up and said, "Oh, we can't take any orders at the moment because H H S E are visiting us." Or, you know, sort of hope everything's okay. And he said, "Oh no, one of our um, <clears throat> one of our members of staff cut his hand off with a stop saw." Um, oh. So everyone was like, "Oh, but, yeah, that's not good." Um, when H H H uh, sorry H H C came out to inspect what had happened, the foreman replicated exactly what the guy had done and cut his hand off in front of the health and safety. Oh, for fuck's sake! Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. F, F bomb again. F bomb again. Yeah. Took, took it off at the wrist. <laughs> so as you can imagine, that factory never reopened. Oh. God. Sorry about that, Mark. That's all right. So I'm just thinking, if anybody was offended by that, they're not really a wood turner. <laughs> you need like a, an automated apology that just crops up a bit like on the BBC. Dear me. Sorry, Lucy. Sorry to everybody in the chat. Um, but... <laughs> That could be expected from that. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. There's an how absolute many, uh, cracker. How many cuts have I done since I last measured? A couple. Uh, three or four. Oh, it's still an inch. Man alive. Stop being so scared of it. Could do we uh, uh, get in noise cancellation on uh, Wayne's explosives? <laughs> we need a beeping machine. Yeah, well, definitely. <laughs> now, I said, um, I, I, I sent a message out to um, to Shug, Huey Lionheart, yes, that, that um, the week of F-bombs is finished now. Um, last, so, not Sunday gone, Sunday before. Oh, what's Sunday gone? Anyway, the Sunday before, I think Nikki, uh, uh, Steve S.T.'s wife, yeah. uh, they had their audio on. Uh, before the the live started, and Nikki dropped an F bomb on Wednesday. Um, 
Shug dropped an F bomb on my live, and then on Friday, on the um, the the quiz night, I dropped an F bomb on the quiz night, and I've dropped another one now. Well, we're doing well. I yeah. used to I used to find that when I went before I went into um, the student side of stuff in education, I was a, I was the site manager at the school, and I used to find that that six weeks over the summer, my language just got worse and worse and worse. The point where when the kids were back in September, my, I was like a potty mouth. <laughs> it was just, just spending time with trades and contractors for six weeks just tipped me to a point where I was just disgraced by myself. Uh, when, we, when we're working with Mike, that's a, a harder problem because you've got to get all of these words into the half hour warm up um, and then suddenly switch them off in the years life. Yeah. Yeah, Kev at 9K Creations has said that um, he watched um, Steve's late in messaging him and he, he's actually took it down and edited. Yeah, he's, he's taking the front of it off. Out. Yeah. It's very easy to do. I mean, it's just natural language and it just happens. All right. Getting to the point where I think. Not that one, because that's stupidly wide. Where is oh, Gerard? Yeah. See you, Gerard. Nice to see you. See you, Gerard. Take care. Still a bit thick. Right. A little lump just there. So I just want to get that sorted. It's that transition point, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Kevin Nike Houston said it was funny when Nicky kicked the box. Yep. Right. But um, now, I, I don't know if Steve is taking this out as well. I think he's taking all the audio out uh, before the light started. But that was funny, yeah. It's natural, but you've got to be careful on YouTube. Um, one of those things. I think what, are the, um, in, what are the rules? If you within the first 30 seconds, then it's a problem. It's where in the middle of it, it's not so bad. No, no, no. With, the, with the way the algorithm works with, with YouTube, you know, I think I said this to um, the people before I started my live on Saturday. You, you do get some, some leeway. If you put the swear word in within 30 seconds, if you put the swear word in halfway through, it'll go, it'll go through. You, you won't get any sort of uh, knockback on it. Yeah. Robert right, Copper, uh, I'm uh, you can get a light inside the bowl, Mark. Sorry, sir, I can can we get a light inside the bowl? Uh, I don't think it's going to... Uh, um, uh, right, this is to Might Rob. be able to, hold on. If, if, if you're trying to get a, um, a look between the outside and the inside to see how thin it is, it's not going to happen with this because it's too dry. It's too dry, yeah. Yeah. No, I think Kev's asking, Ed... Do you stop? Does it stop you monetizing for swearing? It all depends on how I much do, Mark, it is, Kev. Because um, if you go back to the other camera, uh, can you bring the light around towards the lathe a little bit? That's it. I should show the cut. have to put this on the bigger handle because the handle's too short. That's what's uh, jumping me around a bit. <clears throat> trying to do this without going onto a scraper, but I might put a scraper in the bottom there. What's your lighting like in your workshop, Mark? 
in terms of the, the actual standard lighting? Four strip lights, which I keep meaning to change over to LEDs, mm. a ring light, an IKEA light, and this this one here, which is so you've got a ring the, light around your camera then? No. Just ring light focusing down here. Right. Right, uh, in my workshop, Dan, I've got the uh, strip lights. They are all LED strip lights. Right, yeah. Um, I have got lights to focus on the turning, but usually when I'm turning lights, if I put the, uh, them on, they are usually too bright, so I don't usually use them when I'm doing right. lives. Right, I Jimmy said. The... Um, Jimmy said about swear words. If there's a swear word in the first seven seconds, you will automatically get demonetized, and this is for YouTube. Right. I didn't realize it was that strict. YouTube algorithms are a mystery to us all, and they do what they do. Um, we try to work out a little bit, but... Now, see, go on the bevel there. I'm getting close to this edge. But I am going to just... Maybe your traditional grind will treat you better there, Mark. I was just going to say that, yeah. The reason I've switched over is because my traditional coins lost its edge. What ground have you got on that? This one's 55 degree. Right. 55 degree and the traditional grinds straight over grind about 60, 60, 65, but that's a hand grind. Obviously, it sounds, it's a problem with Elm. It does sound thinner than it actually is. Yeah. Quite a resonating piece of wood. Actually not bad. Scott's in from Hampton Wood Turners. Evening, Scott. Hi, Scott. Good evening, Scott. Yeah, going back to the lighting, I use um, LED panel lights that are supposed to go in suspended ceilings. Yeah. Um, and I find them very good. <sighs> That's the only reason I was asking. That was they don't have a direction there. to the light, it just goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were we're just obviously redoing the classroom, so I've been looking at panel lights. We're just putting shed loads on the roof of the classroom. Use this one, or do I use the other one? Where's the other one? Mark's talking to himself. Here I am. How's your blood sugar tonight, Mark? Fine. Very oh, way high. He's, he's had more jelly babies than he's allowed. <laughs> The only danger is his nurse is a psycho and she's going to come and chop, chop his feet off, apparently. Oh. Yeah. My diabetic yeah. nurse. <coughs> you got to watch that. I went, I, went, I went for a review not long ago and she said, right, Mr. Beckett, she said, uh, I've got good news for you. I said, oh, what's that? She said, well, within the next 10 years, you're going to go blind, your kidneys are going to fail and we're going to cut your feet off. I said, well, how's that good news? She said, well, it seems to be what you're aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start uh, looking after myself then. The Mate, person, I mean, Mark now scans his um, blood sugars and he goes direct to the nurse so she knows what his system is. Yeah. So, hold on, and, I'll do this. And I, I just, just view that as being a threat. Just, it's, it's just nothing to do with what he's doing. It's just she's going to come and get him. Ready? The bionic man. Well, it's not gone too bad. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much the same. It's fine. <gasps> right, going mm -hmm. back to the lighting thing. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy has said if you happen to get strobing because of light, that can be fixed in OBS. Ah. Yeah. Um, I've, got to, I've got to ask Scott. Right. Uh, 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 Scott from Hampton Wood Turners. Um, Camera. What, 
what did we on? Camera, Mark. Hey, oh, sorry. Camera. Camera, sorry. What's all that pink of racing behind you, Mark? Shut up, you. Right. Um, Scott from Hamptonwood Town. Um, how far are we? How far away are you from the AAW at the moment? How off? Yo, the Scott is going to the AAW. I was just wondering how far right. he was away. Uh, okay. Yes, Andy, it is. I think quite a few posters people on the, on the way. Right, JP has said, Dan, I bought a new TV to watch the football next season, but it didn't come with any leads. That's amazing. <laughs> it was it was the highlight of my weekend. As a as a loyal Huddersfield Town fan, watching an abysmal season, there's some real satisfaction in the fact that we didn't get relegated and Leeds did. There you go. Right. Oh, Scott's come back with. Uh, he's not. Uh, uh, I think this is back to the AAW. Not this year. Yeah. He's going to be a SWAT though. Um, he's going to be brought in as a regional demonstrator. Oh, nice one, Scott. Andy Nestle is asking you, Mark, and I think this is about your your, your, your blood sugar monitor. Is that on yes. the NHS? Yes, it is. I couldn't afford those. They're 75 quid a piece. My dad has to pay for it, you know. Yeah, but he doesn't have the freestyle leave he has the Dexcom, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You can take, yeah, well, so. get him to check because you can get Dexcom on, um, you can get the Dexcom 7s now. On the yeah, NHS. but my dad's, my mom, my mom's diabet, diabetic, as in type 1. My dad's, yeah. my dad's dietary, sort of, he's, he's old man, abused his body, diabetes. So he's, so he's that, type 2. Yeah, so he don't get it in the same way. My, my, I've got to be honest, my diabetic nurse does love me, because I'm her only type 3. I'm the only type 3 she has. Type 3? Because we're special. What's type, type 3 diabetic? Three? Type three diabetics are diabetics that are insulin dependent. Yeah. That present as a type one, but don't have any means of producing insulin because I don't have a pancreas. It's not that my right. pancreas doesn't work. I don't have one. Right. So we classed as type three. Oh yeah. Oh well. At least you've got something to be proud of. Yeah, it's just Mark, he's got to be different. Can I, can I just say that um, Jane got some good news the other day with her diabetic blood um, blood results, and they have gone down a hell of a lot. Just putting that in there. Oh, he's good. I like how all these lives, we can, we can turn these live conversations pretty much onto anything. Yeah, but as you get older, then... Medical system seems to be the, the main I topic you, of discussion. I thought you was going to say that diabetes becomes more common. Well, it might be, but you know, it's, I bet it does. I go to bike rallies now, and we all wake up in the morning, and we've had uh, a shed load of beer over the night. And we wake up, and we come out of our tents in the morning, and we all get our t boxes of tablets out and take our breakfast of the various is, drugs that keep us alive. As a thirty-seven-year-old. With a uh, with both parents diabetic, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much destined for it if I'm honest. Right, as as a 69 year old who is only on one piece of medication, is there a problem with my microphone? Let, let's not You're... talk about Viagra now, Wayne. No, your mic's okay. Oh. It's just um, pick up background noise a bit, a bit more than usual. Wait, Jippy <laughs> just said he's just put on. An injection for diabetes, it's horrible. He's lost about a stone in about three weeks because I'm not eating much. Well, that's probably the point, Jimmy. Get get your weight down. You've taken an injection for a... What's the in, in, injection for? Well, exactly. What is the injection for? Because I want one. 
I've I do a daily two, injection. Mark does I've got about two every half hour days. injections. Oh, right. Now, I am going to mention this, and then I might block him if he mentions it again. Let's get controversial. Scott, <laughs> jam or cream first. Kev, Who said that? Uh, Kev. Kev did. And I, Kev, no. No no cream, no jam, no nothing. <laughs> butter. That's what you put on scones. You only put butter on scones. Proper butter. No, I disagree. I would say that a proper Somerset <laughs> cream tea is the way to go. Bit of, bit of cheddar cheese, some slices cheese? of strawberry, stuff the jam, and a glass of cider. You can't put cheese on a scone. Yes, you can. Cheese and strawberries go well together. Stick them on right, a scone G- with a glass Jimmy, of cider. Jamie has said, Wayne, wine is not medication. Jamie, yes, is. wine <laughs> is medication. Jane's right, Jane's just shouting in my ear there. Ear there. I am only on one medication because I won't go to the doctors. <laughs> That's reasonable. Right. right, I only take one medication and it's uh, uh, I take an antibiotic for, for <laughs> Rosaria. That's all I take. I take an, an antibiotic for Rosaria. That's all I take. That's it. Now, I've been through chemo twice, and, and the um, results and treatments go with it, so I'm a little bit messed up, but, yeah, I don't care. Roy's the boy said his blood count is 61, so he has to cut out a lot. He's got to have a new blood test. No, 61, Rob. Hey, uh, Roy. Bloody hell, man. A bit, um, yeah. You're saying that Mark's 21 is a bit on the high side. 61 is kind of ridiculous. I don't... If I'm honest, I don't really understand these whole number things because it would it would make far more sense if it was like one to twenty, one being very low and twenty being very high. It seems to go on forever. Well, it is, yeah. Right, Jim. Jim is put on the right. Basically, Jim, five to seven is good. Anything above is high. Anything below is dangerous. Right, Jamie's just put in the the medication that he, that he's on through injection, and it is. Do lack latide? Do lack latide? I'm going to have to look that up. Can is it for diabetes or is it something else? No, that's for diabetes. All oh, right. I didn't realise Jamie was diabetic. Oh yes. Oh, oh, oh. Has, been... <laughs> has been has been for many years. Oh, right. We all love him, but he's everything. Well, I take um, seven different drugs every morning. <laughs> and every time I get asked what I'm taking, I haven't got a clue. Because I don't care. They tell me to take it, I take it. Yeah. Right, Jimmy, Jimmy's put on there, put in there, and people that know, that know Jane will know this. But uh, Jimmy's put in there. Jane is on 100 milligrams of Carlander helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> hope you realise I hope you guys are happy I'm going to sacrifice my lungs for you <laughs> the last grits I didn't do with yeah but yeah you're not really using them properly so who cares That's true. Jimmy Jimmy right. Jim, Jim has just said one of these days sunshine just one of these days okay sanded have a look at this pretty inside bit now. Yeah. I know this is going on a long time tonight, folks, but... Can we go on the um, Tales Talk soon while you do that, Mark? It's nice to see you finishing it. Right, Andy and Stumpy have just put in. Andy and Stumpy. Do you lack to tide? Injection is in a class of medication called incretin. Mind you, cretin that could be due to 
Tuba Jimmy. <laughs> it works by helping the pancreas to release the right amount of insulin when blood sugar levels are high. There you go. Yeah, what do you do for everyone that's got a pancreas? Happy days. Oh, well, he's getting pancreas and being pleased. out with him. Hope you're all right, pleased yeah, yeah. with yourselves. Yeah. Just, blah, blah, see, blah. See, I've see. got a pancreas. Yeah, Mark <laughs> is the only person I know with pancreas envy. Oh, the green-eyed <laughs> pancreas monster's coming out got, of Mark for now. I've got no pancreas, no gallbladder, uh, no appendix. I think everything else is there. Right, genuine yeah. question for you now, then. And, uh, and, so when they, they weigh you for your BMI, yeah. do you take into account that you've got most of your internals missing? Yes. They do take off a percentage. He's a man. They do, yeah, yeah. Do they? Yeah, yeah. I lost uh, the pancreas, the gallbladder, and the appendix by about three and a half pounds. So I've, I've lost four stone. Well, I can't tell. No, because it's all important stuff inside. Hey, my diet, mate, I went in at hospital 24 stone. I came out 11 and a half stone. Oh, I want to see so, photographs of that. I'm not, I didn't realise that you were a big one. I was a massive one. I was still a, a massive one now, but I mean, I mean in size. I was a huge, great, big, fat bus driver. 24 stone, I weighed. Oh, dear. Yep. Came out weighing 11 and a half stone. Oh, so it did you some favours then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Made me the man I am today. Oh, the half you the know? man you were. If I had, hadn't had all that happen, I wouldn't have grown up, grown into this, sounding like Julian Clary. I know, but it's, it's a, I think that's a voice you could you could probably sell to radio. Shut it. <laughs> yeah, I reckon you could. Lucy Bundy Rose says, pancreatitis is the most painful thing I've ever had. Yep. Worse than childbirth. Now, i got to yep. say, I've had two children. I didn't know that much at all, really. Yeah, I didn't think it was that bad. My pancreatic surgeon took great delight in telling my ex-wife that... Pancreatitis was more painful than childbirth because she knew because she'd had both. I'm just putting and it, I'm my, just putting it out there. Believe her. I'm just putting it out there that until you've been kicked in nuts, I don't think anyone realizes what pain is. <laughs> but I now have a very, very serious problem in my um, environment here. My You're glass out of beer. Is empty and I've got no beer in the workshop. Oh, my heart bleeds. I've got four cans of. That's just gold upstairs in the fridge, well, chilling. I got um, three crates of Doom Bar in the house, so I'm not out of beer. But it's anyway, it's the only reason I've taken an hour and three quarters to turn this bloody bowl tonight. So I'm letting the cider chill down properly. Well, you do know that you get... Stumpy uh, said, you I've get... had five feet. Yeah, I didn't know that much at all, did it, Andy? Every time you do your live and you talk about how much cider you drink, Mark, your diabe diabetic nurse is going to be just writing all these notes down. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Martin's yeah. in. Hello, Martin. Yes, Martin, this is your piece of wood. Thank you. The only reason what? I took you an hour and three quarters to turn this and eight is because you don't turn very fast. That's what that is. Uh... You know how and fast Jamie I said, really am. A paper cut on the nose is more painful than job. Clasper, you know how fast I am. <laughs> He's still talking about turning. <laughs> JP says, you may have yeah. such a mark, but I've got a pancreas. <laughs> oh, shut it. Don't care. <laughs> you, and your, you and your flash bloody pancreas. Have you ever thought about having some merch done? Like, you know, like the, I don't know, I've lost my pancreas type patches or something like that. There are some really, really funny T-shirts out there with stuff like "I inject my stuff." I inject myself with stuff that would kill you. Don't mess with me. And... Make your own up, Mark. Get, but the thing is, like, when you make your own up and get some merch. Yeah. My my pancreas just decided not to play anymore. It's a bit like I've, your um, bandsaw, Mark. You mistreated it and it broke. I have not mistreated my bandsaw. Will you stop spreading these vicious rumors? I'm how sorry, am I ever going to get... How am I ever going to get... We went live. You mistreat your bandsaw. There's I heard, no way... 
Wayne and I have both had a band's wall for a lot, much longer than you have, and we haven't broken I've, about I've, I've, I've got to see it. I'm in agreement with Peter. Yeah. I saw the results oh, of him mistreating his stop band's wall. Stop the pair of you. How am I ever going to get a band's wall endorsement? You two keep saying that. I abuse him. <laughs> By our bands, or even Mark Beckett can't break it. <laughs> Buckers, period. Uh, that band saw was second hand to me, and I was a third or fourth owner. Yeah, but I had that, that both, band's both Wayne and, and my bands were way older than yours. Was even created as a model. So, hey, D- Douglas, what Mark did was he switched he switched the band saw on. And supposedly, supposedly, the belt broke. Now, Clear do I believe belt. that? What happened to the belt? Where did I throw it? I threw it somewhere in disgust because it was so frayed and broken. Yeah, uh, now, look look at what Jamie's just put in there, Mark. Jamie's just put in there. Wayne's bandsaw owns a snorkel and it still works. Yeah. That's true. Right, bit of Hampshire Sheen, high gloss. Less is more, less is more. Don't need loads. Yeah, sorry. You will be pleased. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. You will be pleased to know I'm not going to take the bottom off tonight. So it's not actually going to be finished. (laughs) You're not doing anything with your bottom tonight. Not doing anything with the bottom. (laughs) I've gone on too long. Not on his live. What, your, your bottom's too long to do anything with it tonight? Uh, my bottom's too pokey. Sticky outy. I want to, I've got a genuine, another question for you, Mark. Yeah. Um, why have you not got an RP, uh, an AWGB shoot as bad like every other wood turner in the country at the moment? Well, yeah, but it's so rare. All right. It's on the other smoke. Okay. Just <laughs> I told you not but, to, told you not to do that. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark, Mark, have I got an answer for that? Yeah, you have, gone. Yeah, badges? We don't need no badges. We don't need our stinking badges. <laughs> right, Dan. Yeah? Yeah, Dan. I'm going to put my AWGB hat on now. Over the last two years... There's been a change of committee at the AWGB. Oh, don't be, don't be spinning me this one. Um, Here we go. And Here we go. We have a new training and development officer. And this he's is a public working, announcement for why the AWGB he has been working tirelessly to work through the backlog of all the applications that came in for tutor during COVID. Are you, are you reading we this able to do. paper? No, you, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm so going to smack you. <laughs> Stephen, Gordon, if you're you, still in the chat. You struggle to do a question with that voice. He's done a fantastic job of working through. He did, I think, 15 or 16 assessments last week. I know. We've seen them all on Facebook. <laughs> yes. Well, so that's what so we do. J- J- Jamie's asking you, Mark, where's your clink spot hat? Oh, so he waits until Rob leaves. Then he asks that question. I don't know where the hat is. But I do know where my full stock of rolls, sheets, <laughs> net, belts is. It's up at the unit. Yeah, it's right next to all your indas or abrasive that's hung up behind you. <laughs> yeah, that's just me. Yeah, those metres long. Shut up. <laughs> of abrasives behind you. I meant, I meant to ask Dan, actually, if I do this camera. Dan, if you look over there, what's on one of the shelves on the Klingspoor stand? Oh, I don't know. I'm looking. Down the bottom. Under where it says my belt. Oh, that's a true grit shelf. Rob did so. I did ask first. Rob said I was. he's quite happy for me to stack it on there. True grit shelf. That's, that's, you've got more product on there than I have on my shelves in shop. Do you want to buy some? <laughs> yeah, but... I'll so look, at all the, also. look at all the abrasive all over his left hand shoulder. Sorry. Where? I mean, for crying <laughs> out loud. Where? I don't know what you're talking about, mate. Is that a Clingspot t shirt as well you've got on up there? No, it's a bag. 
Oh. Right. It's finally the end. Two hours. God, it's been one of the longest lives I've ever done, I think. Yeah, don't we know it? Shut your face. That's you a very nice bottle. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I haven't finished it because I still got to take the bottom off. What size? What size is that? How big's that then? It's about very ten big. by. How deep? Are it? About four inch. It yeah, was just it's... over, just under five when he started. Don't worry. We've got ten right, on there. The rim, four and a half. Outer rim to outer rim is eight and a half. Jimmy the said he, he notices the ten inches. Black. So it's 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 eight and a half across the outer rim to the outer rim, uh -huh. but at the fattest parts, it's ten inches, and it's four and a half inches deep. Right. But that is a beautiful piece of wood. So what are you going to do with the bottom of it then? I'm just going to slightly dish it. That's all. Just a slight concave on it. That that lot, that one there. Yeah. That's going to be the foot. Mm -hmm. So I'll dish from the edge in. Nice. And I'll do it, do it on a vacuum chuck. Nice. Well, can I just give you a little bit of advice? Yeah. When you do the bottom, don't sound it too much. No. Just say it. Just... <laughs> right. Can, 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 I give, can I give another piece of advice? Oh, what? <laughs> when you do the bottom, don't do a funnel. Plus, I've seen you do that before. <laughs> a funnel with sandpaper. <clears throat> I hate you all. Right. <clears throat> there to there. So that's going to be the bottom. Oh, it's a bit thick, that. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, but, I, yeah. Left, I left some weight the, in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, Dan, that um, everybody has seen Mark use his depth finder uh -huh. and reverse it and use the depth finder and do a funnel from reverse. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. <laughs> we got to say that is a beautiful shape, but we got there. Very nice. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, had to. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. That's come out. Really that nice. is a really nice ball, Mark. Very Martin, well done. Very gotta well say finished. thank you, Martin. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Wayne. Um, Martin, thank you ever so much for uh, giving me this piece of wood. It was it was a pleasure to turn, and I hope I've, I've done it justice, because I know Dan's looking at it very carefully to see if there are any tool marks, sanding marks, because he does love to phone me up and I destroy, think that if you're gonna, destroy if you're gonna, my confidence. No, if you're going to turn something and make an effort, then you should just take a nice photograph and just put the stuff up that looks good. There was nothing <laughs> wrong with this bowl. No, you've done a grand job. He's having a he's having a pop at me about this one. Oh, it's smaller than I thought it was. Yeah, see. Oh, that, but you've heard that, that before, haven't you? That is a lot smaller than I thought it was. I thought that was going to be about. Thought it was huge, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no well, I always I took a picture of it on the top of the headstock. That's always a giveaway. But there's no excuse but, then to not sand that properly, is there? If it being so small. That's how thin it is on the bottom. Yeah, I, I, I did that take that. That dot is the colour. I did take that on board that. after you said it, to be fair. Yeah. I, I, I take it now, but it did. I thought it was a lot bigger than that. So, I've yeah. done a few that you could use the bottom as a window. But there are no sanding marks in the middle of there, Smith. Not in the middle, no, on the edge. <laughs> Where? Well, you can't do it. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. What I'll do is I'll, I'll highlight it, and then I'll share it with your name tagged in it on Facebook, if you like. I, I, I love that because I did that with Mark on the piece he put in for the yeah, one of the pieces he put in for the um, when he went for his RPT. It, oh, he, he, he he showed me a piece and he <clears throat> he turned around and said, "There's no sending marks on on there." And I said, "What about them ones?" <laughs>
<laughs> and he looked and for I, about 15 minutes and couldn't yeah. find them. And that was the piece that Stuart Mortimer held in his hand for an hour and a half. And he said afterwards, for the first time in about 25 years, I can't take a single point off. And it's really upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> he well, said, I the only thing I would have done was sign it in the middle, not round the edge. But hey, there you go. But anyway, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'll take the bottom of that tomorrow. But uh, I've left myself enough room so I don't have to hurt it. But again, thank you, Martin. Lovely piece of wood. Um, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Wayne. For no problems. Any time. Ripping the mickey. Pleasure, mate. Ripping the mick out of me. I'll see you back with Wayne, probably Dan, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. In Wayne's life. Where Dan will do his uh, draw for the, the Arbitech. If not tomorrow night, uh, Dan will be Something. in on Saturday night. It all depends if he can get stuff sorted. Yeah, yep. I'll get on um, tomorrow. No live from me next week because I'm on holiday. I shall be uh, sat in a caravan in deepest Cornwall with that reprobate yep. drinking Doombar. You were drinking thought, Cornwall Dry of Doombar. You're going on holiday I... to Cornwall in Cornwall? Yes, Yeah. with our partners, Kim and Lisa. Huh? We're all going down to Helston for a week of so start fun and debauchery. Can I come back from there on the Friday? I've got to go to Wales for a wedding on the Saturday. And then the Thank following you. Tuesday, I'm off to Spain. I'll be there for two weeks. So I'll see you in July. Oh. <laughs> it's hard life, isn't it? So, Doug Miller, uh, next Tuesday's free, mate, if you want to do it. But I won't be able to hear one for you. But I dare say Wayne will or. Oh, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, Doug, if you, if, Ruby, right. If, ask Ruby. Doug, if, you, if you're going to do a live next uh, Tuesday, yeah, I'll be available to you. Um. So, thank you very much. That's it for me. I'm going to press the button. Uh, thanks for coming along. It's always been so long. Night, night, everybody. Night, night. Night, all. Cheers, everyone.